Welcome back to another Doctor Who product review. Today we're going to be stepping back into the wonderful world of Big Chief as today I'm going to be taking a look at yet another Big Chief product. This time it is the 1-6 scale collector figure diorama environment of the 11th and 12th Doctor TARDIS, a product that I never expected to be reviewing on this channel, yet here we are. Once you buy one Big Chief, you just can't stop. And now I'm skint. Firstly, taking a look at the packaging that the TARDIS came in, it is absolutely massive. Here is the actual official box itself, and here is the massive shipping crate that came in. As per usual, the shipping crate is a tad boring, which just has some company information on the side, along with a massive Big Chief Studios logo. The actual box itself is once again in your average Big Chief format, being very stylish. As you can see at the very top, we get the Doctor Who logo in your standard diamond design. In the very middle, we get a lovely image of the TARDIS nicely on profile, very nicely lit. And then at the very bottom, we get TARDIS, one six skill collector figure diorama environment. One side of the box, we get a promotional image of the TARDIS, along with the Series 7 beta length Doctor figure that I have in fact reviewed. So if you've not checked out that review and you're interested in that figure, then go and check it out. And on the opposite side, we get another promotional image of the TARDIS. However, this time we have the standard version of the 12th Doctor figure displayed alongside it. The box once again contains the Doctor Who logo as well as the title of this set, along with a little bit of a description about Big Chief Studios as well as the TARDIS. This is also accompanied by a few promotional images of the backdrops that can be displayed within the TARDIS, as well as two advertisements for the 11th and 12th Doctor figures available. It's really it for the box. Once again, a really nice design from Big Chief, once again setting off the product nicely. So here we have the TARDIS out of its box, and it is a sheer thing of beauty. In case you've not noticed already, this is a brand new review setup. We've needed to completely get rid of the normal one because this thing is absolutely massive and definitely wouldn't fit on it. Two data is the biggest thing that I have reviewed and probably will ever review on this channel. Of course, it is within scale of the one six scale Big Chief figures that I have previously reviewed, and it is a polystone construction. In case you've seen my previous review of the Big Chief Studios Weeping Angel, you of course already know what that is, but basically, it's a formulation of stone, meaning that this thing is essentially a giant slab of stone, meaning it is pretty heavy. If you drop it or knock it against certain things, if it's especially a hard surface, it does mean that this thing will smash and crack. But to be honest, for the scale that this thing is, there's not really anything else that you could make it out of. It is extremely strong and sturdy, and it is extremely bloody beautiful. To give you an idea of the weight of this thing, I'm going to try and pick it up. As you can see, probably the securest way to lift it up is by grabbing around here. You do not, under any circumstances, grab the lid because this is, of course, a separate piece that does lift off, meaning that if you grab that, you won't have any secure grip on the actual TARDIS casket itself. So lifting it up, as you can see, I'm going to need both of my hands because it is an incredibly heavy piece and even for strongest people, bearing in mind I'm not that strong, this will still be quite a heavy thing and to be quite honest for the price tag, you do not want to risk dropping it because then it will smash and it'll be kind of a waste of nearly £300 and you don't want to do that. So taking a closer look at the TARDIS prop now, starting off with the windows, as you can see all six of the windows have been given a frosted feel and this is the same for every single side of the TARDIS so we have sort of a grained effect that has been applied over the top of these. Of course in the two bottom corners we do have the two panes that are in fact sort of a slightly more snowier plastic than all the others this is the design meaning that it is in fact something that can be seen through as you can see slightly turning over there you can in fact see a little bit of a reflection into the opposite side where the other window is meaning that once again when you in fact turn the electronics on the light is very visible and really nicely shines out and i do believe it does in fact shine out a little bit more than the 10th doctor tardis because that has a little bit of an orange filter over it but this has been really well done all the different pins have been detailed very nicely and i love the design that has been applied to this to make it look frosted once again very accurate to the tv show i do believe that this is representing the tardis as seen in the bells of saint john and early half of series seven and not the 12th doctor era because i've had many different variations of tardis windows and different tardis designs throughout the last few series of doctor who depending on what props are available in case you've not noticed the tardis has been incredibly inconsistent in design over the past few years Something to note is the window panes have in fact been set back into the piece, meaning that the outlines of the windows and the bits that would normally be wood in the TV show are really nicely emphasised, bringing out some of that really nice white detail. Once again, making the light shine out a little bit easier and giving it a really nice feel. To the lower half of the front door now, we have the pull to open signage. Once again, this is probably one of the highlights of the prop for me because the text is actually raised above the sign itself. You can probably see this at a slight angle on the slightly bigger words such as free and public, but this has been extremely nicely replicated. Once again, I'm presuming that they captured exactly the same font from the TV show itself. I didn't in fact realise that this was in fact raised, but as you can see, this has been really well painted. We have that white backdrop in there, and then the black has been really nicely applied to the top of this to bring out that really good highlight. And once again, 
again, we have the wording that is seen on the actual prop itself in the TV show, which has been really well replicated. Towards the side of this, we do get the silver handle, which does have the detailing of two small screws where it is, of course, fixed onto the TARDIS itself. And then to the opposite side of this, we do get two bronze hinges, which do in fact work. So this is the exciting bit that I've been waiting for. This is, of course, made of plastic and it does in fact open, much like the 10th Doctor TARDIS. However, we get something slightly more exciting on the inside. Inside of the pull to open box contains a small little retro phone. As you can see, this has been really nicely detailed. There isn't really too much to talk about. It has been moulded in a black plastic. And then, of course, in the centrepiece, we get a nice little dial section, which has been painted with a silver colour along with a white highlight, which has once again been really well detailed. And then the phone case itself even comes off the actual phone, where it is nicely held in place along with the wire. The phone itself has been sculpted in a standard black plastic. As you can see, we get all the details that you would have come to expect when it comes to a phone. So this can actually be held up to a one six scale figure's face and it can make it look like the doctor is of course receiving a phone call so that has been really nicely sculpted in the same black plastic nothing really too much to talk about and then of course we have the cord itself which is in fact attached to the phone behind let's finish with the phone it does pop nicely back onto the cradle and once again can be held nicely in place all of the wire does sometimes pop out meaning that the phone pops out as well and then the pull to open sign can of course be closed once again once this is closed it does in fact remain in place and the hinge is in fact rather good and sturdy the rest of the TARDIS door, of course, houses more detail. We do get a slightly larger handle towards the opposite side, which is the handle itself that the figure can be posed holding, because this is, once again, raised above the plastic, meaning you can, in fact, get a figure's hands underneath the handle, making it look like it can, in fact, work. And then, of course, below this, in a bronze colour, we do, of course, get the TARDIS lock itself. This has been detailed rather well, and does get the letters Yona imprinted above this. I do believe that this may be a non-copyrighted version of putting Yale in there, but, of course, it can't do that, as I said, due to copyright. So they've gone with Yona instead. And then, of course, finally, we get the detailing of the St. John's Ambulance emblem. This has been printed onto the box really well. It's not just a tacky sticker or anything like that. This has, of course, been printed onto the TARDIS door itself. And it does house a very high quality print, once again, with a lot of different bits of detail. It's your standard St. John's Ambulance sign, basically, but still looks rather nice. Police public call box signage has been once again replicated incredibly well. We have sort of this wooden block around this, making it stand out from the rest of the piece. Once again, all the individual panels have been really well captured. So we have the lettering that has been incredibly nicely printed, not skewed or anything like that, unlike other TARDIS merchandise that we have seen. But to be quite honest, for the high market that this is aiming for, I do expect that from a product. So this has been really well done. Oh, it doesn't look it. Once this is lit, of course, the light does shine through the lettering, once again, making it stand out even more. Continuing around to the side of the TARDIS, we do get that continuation of that rather panel feel. As you can see, either side of the TARDIS does in fact have this end cap. This is on the actual lid itself, which I have noticed on some TARDISes can end up being scuffed. But as I say, due to this being made of polystone, due to the manufacture, it can in fact have scrapes, any scratches on or things like that. It's something that cannot be avoided. It is stated on the Big Chief Studios website, much like the Weeping Angel. Things can alter between all the different products that are released. But to be honest, as this is made of wood in the actual TV show, natural weathering is something you come to expect, which sort of adds to it in a way, as long as the scratches aren't too prominent. Going to the roof of the TARDIS now, this gives a little bit of an opportunity to take a look at some of the wooden textures that have been applied to the TARDIS prop itself. Unlike other lines such as say character options that physically engrave the wooden effect into the plastic, with Big Chief Studios as this is stone, they're not able to do that, otherwise it would be rather rigid and wouldn't really look exactly that right. They've decided to go with more of a paint colour wrap palette that makes it lighter in certain sections, darker in others, giving this really nice wooden impression. As you can see, going all the way down the roof, it is a little bit hard to see on camera and doesn't tend to pick up every so often but in certain lights it does we tend to have almost this panning all the way down that has a few light shades and darker shades it really does bring out a really nice wooden feel and the sculpt itself is incredibly sharp as you can see on all of the corners this has been really well done all of it is incredibly straight and then even to the sides of the prop once again really making it look like wood and even down to the smaller parts here we have that wooden texture so it has once again they've really gone to the effort to make it look like a physical wooden box moving up the roof to the very top of course we get the TARDIS lantern this is probably one of my favorite parts of the whole entire prop. I think that it has been incredibly well replicated. Of course, at the very bottom, we get this base section, which raises it above the actual roof itself. And then in the main central column, we get this plastic section, which has been really nicely engraved, as you can see. Lower half and the top half, we get this engraved section of this circular piece in the middle. Once again, once lit up, the light does really nicely bound out of this, making it look incredibly bright. This is accompanied by four bars that have been separated around the lantern itself, once again, much like in the actual TV show itself. I do believe that this is sort of a wire that, once again, if this is pulled no doubt will come off so yeah 
don't pull it that is a bad idea but yeah so at the very top of the lantern we get the main roof cap itself now unfortunately mine does tend to be on a little bit of an angle but oddly the camera angle that i'm currently at doesn't tend to be actually picking that up which is sort of lucky for me however at certain angles it can of course be seen this has been detailed rather nicely you get several different ridge sections on this and then it all comes to the very tip at the top i do believe that once again this may be plastic and glued on so it could be fixed i guess if you are daring enough to take it off the thing that i can comment on which is the same for all four sides of the tardis is the way that it has been set back we do have a lot of depth in this each individual panel has been set back into the polystone and then above this we have the structure around the outside once again giving it a lot of depth and a lot of natural shading as you can see even now i have zero studio lights or anything like that i've just got the reflection of the natural lighting coming in from the window and naturally do have a lot of different shading around here especially around the side panels of the tardis it's really nicely bring it together making it look incredibly real much like the prop itself very base of the TARDIS now as you can see we actually have some paint apps on this to make it look like it has been weathered this is a common effect on the 10th Doctor TARDIS however this TARDIS doesn't really tend to have much of it it does tend to look rather new so unlike the series 10 one which by this point does in fact look rather battered but what is nice to see is we do have some weathering which is good and once again accurate to what is seen in the show itself rather unusual forms of weathering though however we do get some rather odd sort of brown splashes towards the bottom as you can see itself especially towards this lower panel there we do get this rather unusual paint application and then on the very fender and base of the TARDIS once again we get a few more blotches and things here and there especially in the nooks and crannies once again much like how dirt would in fact collect on a real product this is the same for the rest of the TARDIS once again spinning that round you do in fact get a little bit towards the side however unusually this does in fact span up to the other panel as well which is rather unusual and something that isn't on the front of the TARDIS once again this continues around the opposite side of the fender and then exactly the same for the back as well much like in the TV show, of course, the right-hand side door does open. There is a little stub on the inside that allows it to only go a certain way. But this allows for your figures to, of course, be displayed within the TARDIS itself. To close the door, you can either remove the lid on the top, which is the one way that I recommend because it is a little bit easier. Or you could grip onto the very small handle on the inside that I am just going to do now. Or Lord, do this very gently because this handle is, of course, very slim. It is fit for only one six scale figures. Meaning that if you grab it too roughly, it will, of course, rip it off the actual TARDIS and you don't want to do that because this left hand side door is in fact a solid piece that does not open whatsoever due to the phone box being on the inside of course it won't be able to open very far anywhere and it's not really open in the show itself that much so they've just decided to make it one solid piece which to be honest i can understand why they did it and that is i do believe exactly the same for the 10th doctor tardis as well taking a look at the floor on the inside of the tardis now there isn't really too much to talk about much like in the actual tv show itself it's just your average dark gray style design it does have a few dark flecks in there making it look a little bit like concrete but generally Generally, there isn't really too much to talk about. The 10th Doctor TARDIS is a lot more interesting in that respect because it does have the reddish orange style of tile design on the floor as opposed to this being just your average grey. But that said, it's accurate to what I see in the TV show itself so you can't exactly complain. However, it would be nice to maybe see this line here between the blue and the grey a little bit more neater because it is a little bit rough around parts but to be honest it is just a minor little gripe that isn't really too much of a big deal but it just could have been done slightly better. Because this TARDIS design has technically been in use since Series 5 and has covered two incarnations of the Doctor, Big Chief Studios have supplied three separate different backdrops that you can put within the TARDIS to then represent the figure that you display with it, which is a really good display option. Of course, the first one is for, in fact, the first ever Big Chief figure that was released, the Series 5 11th Doctor figure in the tweed jacket. So this is a translucent print, as you can see. It's kind of translucent. It's on this rather wobbly, plasticky, high-quality, papery stuff. I don't particularly know what it is, but yeah, it's very nice and bendy, so that's good. But on the front we get this really nice high quality print of the TARDIS once again at quite a good angle making it look like the TARDIS doors have just opened with this really nice green glow in there so that is the first one available the second version is of course the series 7b TARDIS it was first seen in the snowman so this is technically the most recent console room however with the blue lighting of course which once again when this is inside the lighting really nicely reflects through the console itself very much making it look like it is real and then of course on the back once again it is translucent and then the third and final backdrop that we have available is technically your most current TARDIS, the one that is currently in use with the 12th Doctor. It is the, once again, exactly the same to that one behind, but it is the orangey amber style of backdrop. On Even with the vent things included at the bottom and then at the very back of the bookshelves as well. So a very good variety of backdrops for this to display it with your Doctor figures, which is really good. Once you've selected a backdrop that you would like inside the TARDIS, all you have to do is slip off the lid as so, pick out your backdrop, and then sort of slide it in on a diagonal angle. I don't believe there's any proper way to do this. I believe this is the way the majority of people put it in. But as you 
you can see you sort of curve it round as it is a rather flexible plastic and then you slide the lid back on top but make sure one of the back lights is sort of behind the actual display itself because then it shines through the console lighting it up a little bit more making it look more exciting so there we have it the lid back on with the TARDIS backdrop inside and now just slipping back the doors there you have it your TARDIS now looks more like a TARDIS rather than a regular phone box Check the Polystone Weeping Angel figure, the TARDIS does in fact have a felt base with a few little stoppers on it, meaning that once it's on display it doesn't in fact move that much. The design at the bottom of the TARDIS is really nice, and once again something of which that pretty much is never going to be seen, but it is still nice that they've included it, of course contains the Doctor Who logo, a nice diagram of the TARDIS, along with the 11th Doctor's dates, and once again the Big Chief from BBC logo. Moving on to the electronics of the TARDIS, it is in fact incredibly easy to activate. As I previously briefly mentioned, the hull of the TARDIS roof is in fact a removable separate piece. But to take off the lid, all you need to do is very carefully slide it off as so it's not connected on in any way. The roof in itself is in fact quite a heavy piece because this is still polystone, much like the actual capsule itself. Tilting it up to the bottom, we do in fact have four separate LED lights, a battery compartment and a big massive red button, so no prizes for what is going to happen next. This does in fact take three AA batteries, I can't comment on the battery life for these because I myself have only had this TARDIS now for not very long, meaning that I don't in fact know how long the batteries do last for, but from what I've been judging from other people, they are in fact pretty good, so make sure that you have three of them available, otherwise you're not going to have a TARDIS with lights, and that'll be incredibly sad. So the first light setting that we have is activated by pressing the button once activates the four central lights in the middle that don't in fact do anything whatsoever but they are in fact incredibly bright. Turning over the TARDIS roof however we do of course also have the lantern at the top as you can see this is really nicely illuminated and just once again remains lit. To activate the second setting all you need to do is press the button once again absolutely no difference on the four lights at the bottom whatsoever however once you turn over the TARDIS once again the lantern at the top this time pulsates like the TARDIS is taking off or landing or, or just flying through space. So this is a really nice feature and once again makes the TARDIS look very much alive. Broad daylight, the only bit of the electronics that is really that visible is the lantern on the top. The rest of the signage and the windows remains pretty much unseen. However, transferring over into darkness now. All of the lights are very nicely illuminated, the lantern on the top is incredibly bright, and then we have the police public call box signage along the top, very nicely lit also, and the two sets of windows on all four sides are really nicely illuminated, however, unfortunately, the ones on the very back, just slightly turning around the TARDIS, can sometimes have a few issues, in fact, today, it is in fact pretty good, however, depending on the positioning of where you have the light on the inside, can in fact affect the scenery, so I will be careful on how you actually position the light, but now taking a look at the interior of the TARDIS on the inside by opening the the door as you can see it is incredibly nicely illuminated it is very bright and depending on what backdrop you have on the inside by having a light behind it the light really nicely glows through the actual TARDIS column on the inside itself making the TARDIS console in fact look like the real one from the TV show as I previously mentioned the TARDIS backdrop piece is in fact printed onto some plastic meaning that once this is curved in the TARDIS accompanied by the positioning of the lights it gives a really nice illusion of the TARDIS console being in fact a three-dimensional model as opposed to just a piece of plastic which is a really good feature i don't know if it was intentional but if it wasn't it is in fact a really good little illusion that i really do like and once again makes it look like the actual tardis finally for the electronics here's a little bit of a close-up of the tardis lantern in dematerialization mode which once again looks pretty cool Doing a size comparison now to some of the other TARDISes in my collection that I've picked up over the years from several different other lines, as you can see the Big Chief Studios TARDIS is absolutely massive and it's definitely the biggest TARDIS that I'm probably ever going to have in my collection. But that said it is also the best detailed TARDIS in my collection, the most accurate and definitely the most good looking TARDIS in my collection. Much like all Big Chief Studios products, this product also comes with your average certificate of authenticity. It's printed on a very nice high quality piece of card. It just has the title of the product on the front and then of course on the back I get a little bit of information about Big Chief along with a few signatures. Then also as an added little bonus you also get an interesting little booklet on how batteries work. Batteries. Yay. Of course, finally, to wrap up this review, here is a comparison with the rest of the Big Chief collection. And honestly, what can I say other than it looks absolutely incredible? I think that this TARDIS is a centerpiece to this collection. If you've watched my previous reviews, you'll of course know my love and passion for the Big Chief Studios line, down to every single one that I've reviewed so far. The tailoring on the costume, the likenesses on the face, all of them are absolutely incredible. Even the Weeping Angel, it's completely different from all the other products. However, the detailing on it is absolutely outstanding, and it's one of those products that is arguably probably 
probably one of the most underrated Doctor Who pieces of merchandise that's ever been released. It is still currently in stock on the Big Chief website, so if you are a fan of the Weeping Angels, I highly recommend checking that out. Of course, some of the other Doctors are now out of stock, so if you do have them, well done. But if you don't, unfortunately, maybe go and check out some other third-party shops and hopefully they'll have a few left. However, this TARDIS is, is essentially the centerpiece now to this Big Chief collection. Not just this collection, however, my whole Doctor Who collection. As soon as you walk in the room, it is there. It is massive. It is glowing. The amount of detail on this, down to the pull to open signs, the windows, the St. John's ambulance sign, the police public call box, the electronic lighting, the TARDIS lantern at the top, and even the wooden textures on it. Every single thing about it, I cannot fault. It looks absolutely wonderful. Of course, there has been a few errors with this, with the polystone and things, with the scratches, but as I say, that is something that cannot be avoided. But to be honest, I just look at what is currently in front of you and that is how excellent it is. Honestly, a complimentary thing to this collection and I absolutely adore it and I highly recommend it. So overall for the Big Chief Studios 1-6 scale 11th Doctor TARDIS, I can't say anything but compliments. Honestly, it is an absolutely incredible collector's piece. I love the detailing on the windows, all the different signage, and even the material that is made from it is extremely high quality. Of course, I have briefly touched on in this review the issue of quality control, and because of the material that this product is made from, it is unavoidable, and that is something that did initially put me off from buying this. However, I must admit this product does in fact have a few errors. There is a few scratches here and there, and the lantern may be slightly wonky. I still haven't decided if it is or not yet. However, I still don't particularly care. I think that definitely the positives of this product definitely outweigh the small errors. And to be honest, oddly in this scale, even though it's larger, you can exactly see the problems that well. There is, of course, the other issue of the price of this product. The recommended retail is currently £269, and it does fluctuate around that price on the Big Chief website whenever they have sales on. Of course, that is a very large amount, and it is something, in fact, that is the largest amount that I've ever paid on a piece of Doctor Who merchandise. I don't think it's ever going to get above this point when it comes to Doctor Who. If somebody that has previously bought from Big Chief and likes their products, then it's definitely a must for the collection, especially if you have Doctor figures. This product I do believe is currently on the way out. The 10th Doctor TARDIS is currently sold out on the website and the only ones that they're selling are the seconds versions, which are ones that have been refurbished and refixed. This one does sort of fluctuate from going in and out of stock all the time, so I'm presuming that the stock for this one may also be running low. So if you do want a Big Chief TARDIS, then definitely now is the time to act. I really hope that if you are wanting one, that you do get one, because this is honestly a product that you don't really want to miss out on, as it is kind of unavoidable, especially if you have Big Chief Doctors, and that is especially why I got mine. Thanks for watching this review. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a big like. Please subscribe if you're not already. If you've got any questions, please do leave them below and I'll be sure to answer them at some point in the near future. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you all in the next review. So bye for now.